Hello there and welcome to the Flourish Exhibition 2020 um, presented by West Yorkshire Print Workshop. My name is Martin Lucas and I'm the Exhibitions Coordinator and I'm delighted to say that we've been able to present a real exhibition of real art in a real place. And here we are in our project space in the Piazza Shopping Centre in Huddersfield, opposite the Art Gallery and Library. And we're open Tuesdays, Fridays and Saturdays, 11 till 4. So do pop in if you get a chance. On display are works by 13 artists shortlisted for this year's Flourish Award. And over the next few weeks, while the show is open to the public, some of those artists will be presenting online talks and studio visits as part of our um, programme. Um, Flourish was established in 2009 to showcase printmaking from Yorkshire and over the last several years it's included submissions from across the UK and each year there's an independent panel of judges who sift through hundreds of prints to come up with a shortlist of 12 to 14 artists each year shortlisted for the Flourish Award. The winner then goes on to have a solo show at Huddersfield Art Gallery in the following year and there are various runners-up prizes associated with the award as well. And this year we're thankful to Great Art and Hawthorne Printmakers for their support and for Kirkley's Council um, enabling us to put on this exhibition. This year's judges included Stephen Snoddy, who's artist and director of New Art Gallery Walsall, Bronwyn Slay, artist and printmaker, and Grant Scanlon, who's the Huddersfield Museum's manager. The Flourish Award seeks to throw a spotlight on printmaking from across the UK, and rather than a large-scale open exhibition which includes one work by a large number of artists, it seeks to identify and select a group of practitioners who are doing interesting things. Unfortunately, but inevitably, there are many good and competent printmakers who don't get shortlisted. On another day, with a different set of judges, the shortlist would be different. We're looking for excellence, always a debatable concept, but important to consider is how does the art make an impact? How does it resonate or stand out? How does it excel within the process of a print technique? How does it break with convention or extend the possibilities of a medium? Does it add something new to the genre of landscape, still life, or abstraction, for example? How does it connect with contemporary life, histories of printmaking, grand or intimate narratives? Excellent art always evokes more than it describes. It will elicit imaginative connections and throw up new possibilities. This year's selectors have brought together a really interesting and diverse group of artists who explore a variety of themes through screen print, etching, lithography, woodcut, linocut, hand printed constructions, assemblage and sculpture. The show includes artists at different stages of their career, some of whom use printmaking as part of a wider practice, others who pursue a traditional and in-depth investigation within a single medium. There are some key themes which cut across the exhibition and are looked at in different ways. One of these is urban landscape, a row of shops shuttered, resonant with recent challenges facing town centres and echoing experiences of lockdown. Or walking between buildings in a city, noticing architectural structures, vertical lines, horizontals, a glimpse of brick or concrete features, the crisscross of cranes, the visual pleasure of a changing view, of turning a corner, the motion of wandering and the movement of a metropolis. There is a buzz of the city, its sights and sounds, the popping colour and energetic marks of street art. Weather-worn pavements, the ground beneath our feet, the traces of human activity on the fabric of the built environment. Neglected places and overlooked spaces are brought into view, ugliness and beauty, snapshots taken, images remembered, repeated, 
layered. Feelings and emotions of now, of another time, of previous lives. Fragments collected, broken, but cared for and made whole. Ordered and beautiful, imbued with another kind of value. Arranged on shelves like museum objects. A kind of resurrection. The natural landscape features strongly in the work of several artists. A landscape mapped and marked by human interaction and interruption. Ours is a fragile world, under pressure, under threat from external forces, in the balance, hanging by a thread. Close up, an abstract collection of black and white marks, light and dark flecks crawling across paper, cuts from a sheet of wood transformed into water, ripples, waves, a sea, an ocean, or a forest dense with trees. We look closely, we step back. We look again. The forest provides a place for stories, a world of fairy tales, myths, legends, where the imagination can run free. Creatures on the land, under the land, a spirit world. An artist dreams the image into being, as she says, venturing into the pathless forest of printmaking, looking for a lost magic, a glimpse through trees of the white heart. We can see nature as expansive, the horizon as wide, the sky as infinite, space beyond our own, meditating on the earth's rotation, the phases of the moon. Rhythm and silence, stillness and light, intimacy and distance. A cosmos, a celestial domain feeding our desires but blowing our minds, our thirst for knowledge, for understanding. A need to apprehend this world of logic, order, structure and regular beauty. The elements in solid form. Earth, fire, water, air and ether. The artists observe, process, reinvent. Many of them seek to play with techniques and materials, pushing the limits of their own knowledge and skill, their materials and scale. Playful invention, visual puns, popular culture, politics and pulp fiction. We try to work out what it all means. I always enjoy hanging a show like Flourish. You never quite know what the work will look like in person, having seen it on a screen. I look for conversations between artworks when hanging the show. This can mean putting work of a similar theme next to each other, but sometimes opposites can work well too. I look for an overall balance where each artist's voice can be heard. Nothing is too shouty, and making sure quiet whispers can be heard. So we've given you a very brief glimpse of the exhibition as it is in Huddersfield. If you can get here, do. In addition to that, we are going to be streaming online some of the artists giving talks uh, about their work and an insight into their studios and their processes. Um, these will be taking place on Thursdays during the exhibition and more details can be found on our social media platforms, Instagram, Facebook and Twitter. We hope you can join us. <laughs>